golden generation if we go mm. back to the 2000s uh, and the current crop of stars have actually now been given the same title by none other than the former Liverpool captain and manager Graham Souness uh, after the uh, win in Scotland last month. Now, the term golden generation yeah. was, was most strongly applied to Svenja on Eriksson's side, who reached Euro 2004 in Portugal uh, and went to the quarterfinals in that competition mm. and then the, the World Cup in Germany two years later. But they never actually got close to silverware, despite the fact that when you look at the team, it was a team littered with stars. Mm. For example, you had David James in goal, but then you had a back four with Gary Neville, John Terry, Sol Campbell, Ashley Cole. Uh, then in midfield, you've got Joe Cole, Stephen Gerrard, Frank Lampard, David Beckham, and then you had Michael Owen and Wayne Rooney. I mean, when you put all those names together, it you kind of do scratch your head and think, how did they not win something? Br- brilliant players mm. in every position. Fantastic lineup. I mean, you read that team now, and like you said, that is just a sensational lineup. Mm. Real quality. Loads of goals, great defenders, just, you know, everything about it, the team. Um, yeah, look, I'm, I'm a bit with, we heard Alex Crook, didn't we, before, and talking about this particular team now, uh, on England's best 11. And I've said to you now, I said to you a few months ago, that I believe that England can go back-to-back tournaments and win them. Because yes, I'm okay. saying that because 98, I was in France, and I I had a little punt on, on uh, France to win the World Cup at, in 98. And I remember them doing 98 and 2000. They were a special group, mm. huge talent. And they were gelling. You could see the French team were gelling all over the pitch and with really good players. And I think that with England, I think, yeah, I know the history and people can't think Gareth can't win the, a tournament. M.A. Jackie, you know, no one's, you know, mm. he won in 98 and, he, you know, no one really holds him up as the, you know, a, a sensational French manager, mm. although he won, you know, a, a World Cup with him the first time round. Um, and I just think if Gareth gets it slightly right, this England can, kid team can carry itself. I think they're they're capable. I look at every position. I think they've got so much about them. They could go Euros, World Cup, in my opinion. And people might laugh at what I'm saying, but I've seen it done with Spain and I've seen it done with France. They, who have done similar feats? I think England can do it because that group. Are you start and then you put the England's best eleven now. They complement each other all over the pitch, and that's what this team does. If you look at this England team, although they didn't, fail, I've always known about, and it's quite well known. The media have talked about it. There was a lot of. Um, Difficult relationships with the England team because of the clubs they played for at the time. There were cliques. There was cliques. Yeah, yeah. That's the that's the way of phrasing it, um, and that was quite clear. And because. There was a lot of success between, obviously, Arsenal players, Chelsea, Man United. There was cliques in there. Um, So I think that came at a huge price. I don't think that exists in the present England team. I don't think there's cliques. No, I I think that is one of the one of the key sort of starting points for Gareth Southgate when he took over, that he knew he needed to create a better environment within the England setup. Yeah. Uh, Because, I mean, how divisive is it to have cliques? Within a well, I give you a club a, format I te- or team I tell you what happened now with the Republic of Ireland. We had a few Arsenal players. We certainly had three or four Man United players, and we had at least four Liverpool players. In, so this is eighties and nineties, and Man United and Liverpool. But all the United boys and all the Liverpool boys got on. They were the two teams okay. that are challenging. Ronnie Whelan, Ray Houghton, Steve Staunton, John Aldridge got on brilliantly well with Paul McGrath, Kevin Moran, mm. uh, Roy Keane, uh, Dennis Irwin, all them players. We 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 managed it. It worked. Mm. And there wasn't any sort of fractions in the dressing room. And I don't, I, I'm pretty sure that wasn't the case with the 2004 England team. So yeah. that would be my reason for why that team didn't win anything. I think because there was fractured relationships within that group. Not because they weren't good enough, because that team clearly is. And like I say, that's one of the things that Gareth Southgate looked on and thought, I need to change that. Then he's changed this environment. I need to make it positive, inviting, welcoming everyone together as one. Why, though, what I want to know about the cliques then... When you when you have those, I get I get it. I get that's quite normal in some respects because you're they're your teammates at club level, your mates at club level, and when you're playing against other teams in the Premier League, as they were obviously, there's a huge rivalry. But why can't you put that aside when you're meeting up in a national team when you're all playing for one side, playing for pride, wanting to win the biggest trophies on offer? Why couldn't that be put aside? If you don't get on with someone, or you don't get on with, as as a team as a group, you you know. It, 
There's been periods of talk sport over the years where certain people didn't get on, you know? Yeah, OK, I get that. But then how has that. Southgate been able to change that culture? Well, I think he's looked at the mentality of a lot of individuals and there'll be some that'll be left out and some that'll be in. You know, mm. well, let's go back to Qatar with, you know, why is... I mean, I don't know. I could be... A, why has Sterling been left out? Is it purely on football? I doubt it because he's played well enough to be in the England squad. Why was Ben White never reappeared? Mm. You know, was there any issues there? We don't know. But to me, from the outside looking in, we're thinking, well, it's a bit weird. It doesn't quite add up. OK, and I think certainly at the time, that Stephen Gerrard, Frank Lampard conversation that always happened, I don't know and I don't know their relationship, but I was always led to believe they don't really, they're not, they're different. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't mm -hmm. quite get on with each other. They have huge respect for each other, I'm sure, as players, but they couldn't make it work. And, may have, you know, I'm not saying that's the only one. There would have been other positions as well, yeah. you know, um, and players. And sometimes managers, you know, Sir Alex was a very dominating manager that he might not have been... He wasn't OK with his players going away with England. Mm. You know, mm. he, he, he was all about Man United because that's who he managed and that's who he was only interested in. Have you watched the Beckham documentary yet? On no. Netflix? No. It's brilliant. I, I'm going to I'm gonna wait to... It's literally... I'm going to watch them all one after another. Yeah, so um, but you will. You'll one. find yourself... I've got, I've got to watch the next one. There's only four yeah. episodes, an hour or so long each. It's brilliant. And you do learn about... Sir Alex Ferguson a little bit more and how in terms of David Beckham didn't want him dating Victoria uh, Adams yeah. as she was because of who she was a celebrity didn't want the distractions for David Beckham but it, you know it's interesting as you're saying there about how he controlled his club and, and how maybe there was a failure well, Jose in previous did a bit managers that with Chelsea didn't he he controlled the Chelsea dressing room yeah, you know, but maybe uh, very was, much. Maybe there was a failure within the England setup of being able to control. And listen, I'm yeah. not saying control to the point of every single minute of the day you're control, but as mm. in maybe no other England manager now that we've seen it with differently with Gareth Southgate was able to just change the culture because they didn't see it as a well, as a must have, change. This would have been Ericsson's team, wouldn't this it? Was Sven, 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 this was Sven and This was Sven's team. Yeah. So I I don't know. Look again from the outside, England's very complicated. It always has been. And when they've had... You know, Bobby Robson and Terry Venables had the two teams, for me, the most closest to winning something. Because, first of all, in 1990, England had an exceptional side with a lot of great players. And they didn't quite get over the line. OK? They didn't quite, but they were close. Mm -hmm. And they were close with Terry Venables in 96. That was another... That was a group that you was united. But, obviously, you lose it in a certain manner, yeah. penalty shootout. So, they've been close. I think this team's up there... And I think if, if Gareth can show any qualities, uh, and look, he's done a hell of a job so far, if he can improve a bit more and be a bit more like Venables and Bobby Robson somewhere along the line, they can win tournaments. There is no doubt. I look at the England present team and think, they, around Europe, they'd all be afraid of England now. That wasn't well, the case. Uh, Alex, Crook, Alex Crook said that, didn't he, just before, where he said, in Europe right now, there probably isn't any other team that can better England. Do you mm. agree with that as well? Yeah, I, I think England are the ones to beat. Mm. You know, I'm saying that. I'm saying that because I'm. that's what I see. I think I've seen in a gradual improvement and I've seen players like Bellingham come in and then he's gone on to a new level and I'm seeing Saka at Arsenal come in and looks like he's going to go on to another level. They're ready for top tournament performances. And, you know, and they've got a massive deep squad, England. They've always had great players. It was the envy. We always used to be envious of, you know, looking Scotland would of England and the quality they've got. Kevin North Wales has texted just now, just listening in, saying, talking about the golden generation not winning anything, but no one talks about the teams they had to play. Uh, I like, like Brazil, France and Italy, sides mm. that they didn't have a chance in beating, he says. Yeah, well, I, I, the only other thing I'd say to that was, would you say Kevin? Uh, Kev, yeah. Yeah, Kevin. I'd say, well, if you go back to France 98 when when France won it, they beat Brazil 3-0 in the final. They beat Croatia in the semi-final. They beat Paraguay in their group. They had some really tough matches along the way and they managed to do it. You're going to have to beat the biggest nations.